Now I want to give the floor to Professor Carlos Murdoch. He is an architect, graduated from FAO, uh, Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. He has a master's from uh, in, in sustainable cities from the Vega de Almeida University. He's the coordinator of the urban research uh, from, at the University of Mackenzie in Sao Paulo. He works in the sustainability field for future possible scenarios with planning activities throughout Brazil. He's a uh, guest professor at the uh, Getulio Vargas Foundation. He's the director of the architecture office Murdoch and Associates, where he developed design and construction works and consultancy in energy efficiency and sustainability and urban planning. Professor Murdoch, can you please tell us more about the possibilities of mobilities of a central line and of new developments for the subway and regarding these possibilities that we have just seen with Professor Murdoch to transform all these uh, areas that are historic, centralized, and that can be catalyzed. So how, when, and why start there? First of all, first of all, I want to thank all of you and mainly I'd like to thank the Cultural Institute of Denmark that is allowing this moment and a meeting that is so rich. I'd like to highlight uh, some aspects that I see as very important. First of all, uh, when as of the announcement of the Congress of the Union, International Union of Architects here in Brazil, it was a great joy. And at the same time, we uh, were afraid. We were uncertain uh, when the pandemic started and then the Congress was postponed. Uh, Paulo Protasio defined very well that at that time uh, we could rethink the Congress, understanding that we are starting a new stage on Earth. It's a post-pandemic stage, and at the same time, uh, as all crises, we have the opportunity to emerge better. So I don't think we are doing a Congress in the pandemic, but rather we are doing the first Congress in which we can be much more democratic and able to reach much more people. In this sense, I want to thank Professor Pablo Benetti and Cal. It's, I'm very honored to be at this panel. I'd like you to please show my presentation because I'm going to tell a little story. I hope you enjoy. So at this time, uh, we, are, everyone, are faced with uncertainties. How are we going to emerge from this pandemic world? Uh, uh, people are angst. People are um, has have anxiety, uncertainty regarding employment, regarding economy. We see this happening more and more. We are amidst a huge uh, breakthrough moment. We have two ways out. Either we reinvent ourselves, we recreate ourselves, or we sit down and cry. And in this way, our life on Earth will come to an end. So I truly believe in the ability of civilization. I think we started to use technology in a very intelligent way. And this symposium is exactly an example of all this. Uh, how surprisingly people from all corners on Earth are thinking similar things with proposals so com with a lot of creativity and com of skill. And we've just heard the proposal from Copenhagen and from downtown Rio de Janeiro. In Rio de Janeiro, what we need is uh, employment recover and economic recover. Uh, what is the issue at hand? Rio de Janeiro has uh, been in a decay period of time, an end of a cycle. Our dear Paulo Protaso, who has just spoken, he commented very well, Rio de Janeiro has, was born to be, to be a capital. Uh, but we no longer a capital since over 60 years, and we still have this issue. Have we reinvented ourselves? I don't think so. Our proud, our boldness, um, 
uh, w was responsible in some way or not for the crisis process in which we are uh, submerged. And now we need to find again our true vocation of cultural capital, of an architectural, an architectural capital, but also of the innovation and of creativity. Looking to the back to the past, in the, every crisis period, we learned the skill of civil construction and uh, public and private investment. But main, mainly of this articulation that the possibility of then creating investment and then trigger the economic uh, rebound. We've seen that in 1929. And then after the Second World War, a series of investments such as the Marshall Plan. And now we are watching with the new Green New Deal, a, another set of initiatives championed by the United States and also Europe is starting to think in the same way due to the ability of construction work generating jobs immediately so that the economy is recovered immediately. So Rio de Janeiro needs big investments uh, like, such as infrastructure mobility in downtown areas, such as Sauron has just commented. And we need a disruptive movement in our history. Since we are in, in International Congress, I would like to give some context to you. Rio de Janeiro exists for a very interesting reason. Uh, we are far from, uh, uh, we are one of the, f uh, we have, we are a natural port, a port in which we can have ships very naturally, and the Guanabara Bay has a feature of easy protection because it has such as an entry. It will have a narrow entrance. So therefore, uh, Rio de Janeiro uh, is born in the ocean and the sea in a certain way. And, f uh, and in certain ways, for a very long period of time, it, it, it showed it back to the ocean. We created huge barriers, and the native of Rio de Janeiro, the Carioca, uh, don't see it. We see the beach, but we don't see the bay. We are uh, far away from the bay, and in this sense, we neglected the Guanabara Bay, and it is very much polluted uh, as a consequence. It is important to uh, see our, my dear, wonderful Rio de Janeiro, capital of Rio de Janeiro state, first capital of Brazil, the capital of uh, 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 below the equator rain. It's a mythic city. Everything uh, works well, but a few things goes bad. Um, I'd like to tell you a short story now, please. Keep moving it, you, you see very interesting things. For those that don't know the city, it's a structure between the ocean and the mountain city. Here you can see the main mountains um, areas that structure the whole landscape of the city. To the right, you see the Guanabara Bay. This uh, uh, yellow circle that you see on the right, small circle, is the downtown area. And why is that so? How come you have a downtown area in the corner of the city? But this is exactly where the city was born, the port area. This region is specifically where the city is born is one of it's a very protected area where the ships can come and park very easily. Uh, as of the discovery of precious uh, silver and gold in the regions uh, close to the city of Rio de Janeiro in Minas Gerais, de Janeiro, uh, in Minas Gerais sorry, and due to Rio de Janeiro being a, a, an ocean city with uh, this port area, a city open to influences, it enriched due to that. It's a port city. 
the city evolved naturally uh, around the mountains and closer to the coastline those that had that the richer ones lived and the poorer lived on the top to the uh, because it was less valued land and there you have the industrial areas as well and this will promote the development of the city and its transportation uh, lanes Rio de Janeiro also will develop uh, and uh, do a kind of urban sprawl to other regions and go all, uh, go beyond the limits of the city, becoming the second larger metropolis of Brazil with three million inhabitants. Here you can see the main network of transportation currently. In black, you see the railroad lanes, and you can see that it follows the arrow lines of the previous slide. In pink, you can see the subway, it's very important, but we can notice that for the size of the city is very uh, meager uh, lines. And in green, we have an addition uh, of the municipality for the Olympic Games, which is a BRT bus of rapid transit. It's exclusive lanes uh, built for the Olympics. And the VLT, we have an embryonary construction works to the right in red. So we can observe from this that uh, we can observe that this region exactly uh, that we, we can call uh, the downtown area, the central Rio de Janeiro, uh, it, we ha it is in the border of the Guanabara Bay, a region that gathers a series of activities uh, compacted activities. We have two airports, uh, 17 kilometers uh, from one from the other. We have this the university in Niterói, a neighborhood a municipality. In orange, you see the port zone. And here, you, in blue, you see all the universities of the region. And the healthcare centers in yellow, hospitals, a huge amount of hospitals in this region. And in red, we have a great uh, concentration of cultural spaces. So it's not by chance that uh, we have a concentration in this area, because this is the beginning of the city. Rio de Janeiro officially has 6,800,000 people, and in 2030 it will stop uh, growing and we'll be, we'll, we'll, there is this forecast of emptying the city in tw 2030. On the other hand, we, we are against the horizontal development mo model of the past, which creates a extremely expensive city. Our last master plan pointed out to this horizontal growth of the city. Uh, currently, we see that there is a need to compact the city, that the offer of housing uh, goes back more and more to more central area, endowed with infrastructure, transportation, and equi uh, urban equipment and access. So it's natural that the municipality, which has given already a huge step with the design of the Porto Maravilha, now is again giving a, a, a stride with the revitalization of the central area, changing its standard of behavior from just one activity to a multi-activities. Um, uh, aiming at attracting the youth that uh, um, to go back and all the real estate market back to the city center. So more than ever, we need to reinforce our genesis, our nuclei, our core. 
And here uh, comes the concept of designing to improve the mobility. In, in yellow, you can see the metro line that we propose, and why is that so? First of all, to strengthen this corridor. It's a sort of corridor, it's more of a letter C, full of urban equipment and also urban areas, common areas. In pink, we have again the airport to the top and one of the largest university centers where we have the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro, it's called Ilha do Fundão, Fundão and living side by side with communities, the favelas, in fact. We have the favela da Maré, we have also an isolated city called Caju. It has a port vocation, but also a vocation of recycling and developing a sustainable economy. Down, down below we have the Porto Maravilha and the downtown area. And on the other side, we have the UFI, the Univers State University of Rio de Janeiro. And the idea is that uh, shouldn't we again resume the works of the metro line towards the municipality of Niterói? This metro line that I'm going to call 2A, that you can see here the stops, without hierarchy of more important, less important stops, metro stops, but it's going to reach about 1,800,000 people reaching the municipality of Niterói. And there we can plant the seed of a Rio de Janeiro truly metropolitan. Here we have an analysis of the range of uh, one kilometer of walk, about two minutes of walk, to analyze the population that's going to benefit from this metro line. So the proposal is that this line of, uh, let's call it airport, uh, airport island, connecting also to Galeão Airport, to Santos Dumont Airport. It's a line that uh, stops in the favela of Maré, promoting an inclusion, why not? Including democratic inclusion of the population. This is a great concern of ours, connecting the university to the downtown area through the metro. So how to finance that? How can we pay for all this infrastructure? So uh, current description is that you, there are taxes currently, taxes that goes to uh, the municipal, state and federal spheres. We don't know exactly the rules and regulation of the fiscal in Brazil. So the, the government gathers this money and then promotes uh, build services for the population. So, um, so the government that you vote for decides where to invest. Let's, let's move forward. Our proposal is that uh, identifying with, we ask the public ministry if we could exchange that of some com companies for public works. And we received a positive answer. So then, therefore, we can exchange that from construction companies or developers that owes like three, four millions for, uh, for metro works. So how much, is, you can ask, how much does it cost to build a line? Uh, we reached the conclusion that currently uh, we, it, it will cost from three to four billion. And large part of this metro line can be built on the surface, which cheapens the costs. The under, underground 
uh, can be just a small uh, part of this line. So the proposal is that the X company who is in debt for millions to the government and for her uh, that uh, for million the construction costs is much lower because we know that if you are a construction company it you will have some profit so the cost will be 2.5 for example and then the company will have some profit and it could, could continue in operations and this is good for the gov for the company for the government because it will generate jobs it's good for the population because the population will have an infrastructure uh, work without having to pay for that and this money not necessarily would have to go through the black box of the government uh, like an electoral fund. It is going to be in directly be reversed for the community, for the population. So it's a win-win game. It's good for the government, it's good for the company, and it's good for the population above all. It gains in mobility as well as jobs and other things. Uh, see here on the breast, it's a co coincidence. Uh, here you see the news reports, public bands have autonomy to solve the or the Brecht construction company debt. So it will could re-emerge in operations paying less and re, uh, reassuming its great importance. Some consequences and hypotheses of this great th urban tessiture that we are proposing. For example, we are thinking here of reviving the port zone because this is where the city was born. The essence of Rio de Janeiro is the port. It's, a origin, it's the origin of the city. And the import, we have just seen the importance of the port for the city of Copenhagen. And we are in, therefore creating a network of port cities. And we are realizing similar ideas of, pro, similar problems and similar solutions. It's impressive how the pattern repeats itself and it, our idea is to recover the importance of the port activities for the city. Here, for example, the, the neighborhood of Caju, we have just mentioned it, as an which has an important vocation as a recycling center. In red, you can observe it is a ship cemetery of the port zone. The Federal University of Rio de Janeiro it will be also extremely benefit from this connection. The governor, governor Island uh, will be also uh, be released from its problem of having to use cars for accessing it. And it's currently a huge problem of traffic and other things. The two airports will be able to communicate and also be integrated to the subway line. It's, this is we consider to be very important as well. Um, also, here we can see an opportunity to rethink a new use of the neighborhood of the airport Santos Dumont, the old airport, which could have an urban occupation if we decided so. Here you can see very interesting proposal for a re revitalization of the area, creating a bayfront park in the, fa in the front of the airport, I I the largest in the world. And to conclude, to explain why are we the center, we are the center of this region, we are the center of this bay, and our mirror city called Niterói is the neighborhood city. It's an, it's an extension of Rio de Janeiro. We had to embrace one another, Rio, Rio Niterói. We have to walk hand in hand uh, in, as a metropolitan area to uh, 
to uh, revitalize the whole area. So if one economy is faster, the other will be so, suffer the consequences and the opposite as well. It's like if you throw a stone in a lake and it's not by coincidence that the logo of UIA is this uh, stone in a lake cr promoting, creating circles that spread hope to everyone. And here I want to say farewell and um, acknowledge uh, everyone that had participated in this work. Felipe Salles is someone that participated and is very important. I want to thank the opportunity. Thank you very much.